All right, so let's try an example playing with these continuous distributions in order to calculate certain values. In this case, we're given a continuous distribution where our probability is given by either 0 when it's most places or it's equal to a when x is between 1 and 2. And so the, the question is asking us to determine what is a, what is the expectation value of x, what is the expectation of x squared, what is the variance, and what is the standard deviation. And first, before we start trying to understand or try to calculate these things, let's just look at what this looks like. If I were to draw this probability distribution, I would have my y and my x-axis, and here's 0. I'm going to explicitly mark 1, and I'm going to mark 2. And on my y-axis, I'm going to write a. And so my probability distribution is simply written as such, where I just have a value or I have a probability of an event occurring, and between 1 and 2, it's equal to a, but anywhere else, it's equal to 0. And so I basically just have this box that appears in an xy plot, where again, if my x can be any value between minus infinity and, inf and infinity, but if my x is equal to anywhere between 1 and 2, then the probability of me finding x at that value is equal to a. If it's any other value, say it's equal to 3, the probability of me finding my x equal to 3, that's equal to 0. Just because out here, this is where 3 lives, and again, my probability is 0 at this point. And so that's essentially what these functions try to discuss, is they just give you a continuous view as to what the probability of finding an event, in this case it's just the value of x, and it just tells you what the probability of finding that value of x is in a graphical form. So the first thing that we're going to solve for is a. We're going to find out what is this value of a, which is this value right here. We're going to determine what that is. And in order to do that, we're going to do what's called normalizing our probability distribution. And so recall, in, previously in the lecture, we defined that the sum of, or the integral of, p of x dx is equal to 1. And remember, what this means is that the probability of finding x anywhere in the universe, and really the universe is anywhere from minus infinity to infinity, is equal to 1, meaning that the probability of having an event occur is absolutely certain. Since I can now break up my integral into specific parts, because I don't need to do this integral between minus infinity and infinity, and that's because my probability distribution is equal to zero for most of this probability distribution. So I can write this integral minus infinity to infinity, px dx. Well, that's equal to an integral of minus infinity to one, p of x dx, plus the integral of 1 to 2, p of x dx, plus the integral of 2 to infinity, p of x dx. And like I said before, this value from negative infinity to 1, well that just represents all this region out here, off to minus infinity. And the probability, this p of x, well that's equal to 0 at that point. So that means that integral disappears. Likewise, this integral from 2 to infinity represents this region all the way out here. All the stuff that's greater than 2. And again, the probability in that region is equal to 0. So what I'm left with is just this integral from 1 to 2, p of x dx is equal to 1. Meaning that the probability of finding an event x anywhere between 1 and 2 is equal to 1. It's certain that I'm going to find an x value between those two spots. And we know that p of x, well that's just simply equal to a between 1 and 2. So I'm just going to write a dx is equal to 1. If I evaluate this integral, well I can pull the a out front, 1, 2, d of x, that's equal to 1. So the integral of dx is just equal to x. So I'll just move this up over here a times x evaluated between 1 and 2, that's equal to 1. I can rearrange, so I have a is equal to 1 divided by 2 minus 1. I'm applying the fundamental theorem of calculus. 
That means my a is equal to 1 over 1, or it's equal to 1. Now this might appear to be a trivial solution, however, it's just because I chose my bounds or my range to be 1 and 2. But for you, when you do your homework example, you'll have a random number um, for your beginning and your end for your bounds, and so your a will be a different number in this case. But you will solve it exactly the same way. And you will use this, this procedure called normalization over and over and over again in the context of this course to solve for various constants. That means at this point I'm just going to just modify this definition for my probability distribution. And I'm just going to replace that a up there with 1. Because now I know what a is, it's equal to 1 in my case. So I can just say, well, my p of x is equal to 1 anytime it's between, my x is between 1 and 2. And I'm just going to just update my plot so that it represents that as well. And then it's going to be equal to 0 otherwise. And so I can take this forward now and apply this to the other four things that we're going to calculate. The expectation value of x, the expectation value of x squared, the variance, and the standard deviation. All right, so let's calculate that second thing the expectation value of x. So the expectation value of x is calculated by saying that we're going to take the integral between 1 and 2 x times p of x dx. And again, I'm only evaluating between 1 and 2 because as I showed before, the probability of any other region is equal to 0, so I don't need to include it in my integral. I also know that my probability in for the region between 1 and 2 is equal to 1. So I can rewrite this expression to say the integral between 1 and 2 is equal to x times 1 times d of x. Because remember, whatever value you solve for a, that's what needs to go in for this p of x in this example. In my case, it's just equal to 1. But this again simplifies to a very straightforward integral. And the expectation value of x is equal to the integral between 1 and 2 of x dx. When I evaluate that integral, then I'm going to end up with x squared over 2 evaluated between 1 and 2. And this leaves me with an expectation value of 2 squared minus 1 squared divided by 2, which leaves me with 4 minus 1 is over 2, which leaves me with 3 over 2. Now let's take that number and just go back up to our picture that I had drawn up here for a second ago so we can see where that is. Now 3 over 2 for x is right here in the middle between my two bounds of where I actually have a probability equal to 1. It's right halfway in between. And that makes a lot of sense that that's where it should be. Because I've got an equal probability of finding to having an event or my x to be anywhere between 1 and 2, then that means the expected value or the average value, which might be a more intuitive term to help you understand what's happening here, should be right in the middle. If I had a probability distribution that, was, that looked different from this, then of course the expectation value might shift so that it ends up being skewed to one side or the other. But in this case, because it's constant across the whole range, then that means that it should end up being right in the middle. All right, that's two down. We found a, we found the expectation value of x. Let's now find the expectation of x squared. So we define that by saying that it was equal to the integral between 1 and 2, x squared, p of x dx. Again, remember that my bounds of my integration are only going to be between 1 and 2 because everywhere else my probability is equal to 0. I'm going to substitute in for all my values that I know. So the integral between 1 and 2, I have x squared. My probability in this region is equal to 1 times dx. And again, I have a fairly straightforward integral to evaluate. It's just essentially the integral of x squared, which is x cubed over 3, evaluated between 1 and 2. That means I have 2 cubed minus 1 cubed divided by 3. 2 cubed is equal to 8 minus 1 over 3. And in the end, what I get is 7 over 3. Finally, the final two points being the variance and the standard deviation. The variance in this case, that's just calculated as being the expectation value of x squared minus the square of the expectation value of x. 
we just calculated the square of the expectation value, or the expectation value of x squared, which was just 7 over 3. The square of the expectation value, well, that was equal to 3 halves squared. That means then that I have 7 over 3 minus 9 over 4. What I'm going to do is multiply the term on the left, the 7 over 3, by 4 over 4, and the term on the right, the 9 fourths, by 3 over 3, and this is so I can get a common denominator. What I'm left with is 28 minus 27 all divided by 12, and this leaves me with 1 12. Finally, to calculate the standard deviation, which is just sigma x, all I need to do is just take the square root of the value that I just calculated a second ago. And so I'm just going to be taking the square root of 1 over 12, and that I can simplify again to just the square root of 1 over 12. To summarize, we will employ these tools discussed in this preparation lecture to solve and extract measurable quantities from quantum mechanical systems. This is because quantum mechanics is a probabilistic model where objects are represented as waves and events occur stochastically.